I know guys, I just need Wilson. Ryan, where is he? Okay, so let's check your warm up. You wanted to graph y equals sine theta and y equals cosine theta. These are just the parent functions, so the amplitude is 1 and the period is the typical 2 pi. We need to identify those so we can label our axes. Once we have our axes labeled, we're ready to graph our pattern points. We'll go over sine on the graph and cosine in the next video, so here we go. Okay, Wilson, let's review. So last time we learned how to graph sine and we learned the five pattern points. We have y equals sine theta, we have sine of zero equals zero, then we go high, zero, low, zero, and that is one cycle of sine that has a period of two pi and an amplitude of one because that's half the height. What should we graph next, Wilson? y equals sine of two theta? Ooh, that one's gonna be a little trickier. We might need Mrs. Peart's help on the whiteboard. Right, I think we need to look at what's happening to the points then. We also checked out for just sine theta when theta is... Wilson, don't leave me to do it by myself. All right, when theta is zero, what is sine of two theta? Okay, so then that would be sine of two times zero which is sine of zero, which we know is zero. All right, what about pi force? Well then sine of two times pi force, okay, the two would divide out leaving sine of pi halves, which we know is one. All right, that's interesting. So zero, one. Okay, the next one we did was pi halves, 3 pi force and pi. Do you get what we're doing here? Sine of 2 times pi halves. Sine of 2 times 3 pi force. Sine of 2 times pi. I want you to try and finish that and then let's check back. All right, how did you do? Let's see. Sine of 2 times pi halves is sine of pi, which is 0. Sine of 2 times 3 pi fours, the 2 would divide out with the 4. Sine of 3 pi halves is negative 1. Sine of 2 times pi is sine of 2 pi, which is 0. Remember, if that was too quick, you can always pause, rewind, and rewatch. But now, Miss Ryan, Wilson, what can we do with those points? All right, that was really helpful, Mrs. Spirit. So let's see. Well, Wilson would start at sine of 0 is 0. And then we'd say at pi over 4, we were at 1, right? And then at pi halves, we are at 0 again. And then at 3 pi over 4, we're at negative 1. And then at pi now, we're at 0. So we went 0 high, 0 low, 0. So we've completed one cycle now in pi. So what? did that two inside of sine two theta do to the graph? Well, if y equals sine theta finishes one cycle with a period of two pi, and this one finishes quicker now with a period of pi, how many cycles would fit with two pi? Well, two of them. So what's happening to the graph? Are we, we're kind of compressing it horizontally, so we're fitting more cycles in the length of 2 pi. Let's throw it back to Peer. 
Okay, wow. Back to me then. Well, Miss Ryan, so we have one cycle. Whoops, you stole one. One cycle from zero to pi. Let's reorient our graph and let's get it back to zero to two pi, which would mean that this would be zero theta, this would be pi fourths, this is pi halves, this is three pi fourths, and then this is pi. So now all I did was kind of show it a little bit. Okay, I'm getting to it. One full cycle, hopefully I, we're not confusing you here, is between zero and pi. Let's finish it out through two pi. So then we're at our zero. We go high, zero, low, zero. Whoa! Really? <sighs> okay. Ooh, this is getting exciting now. Ooh. Okay, can't lie. I think I'm getting a little excited here. All right, so we know that we have two cycles from zero to two pi. Two cycles. And as Miss Ryan said, it's kind of like we got horizontally compressed because we know normally the period is zero to two pi, but now it's zero to pi. And we know that that is half the original period. One half. We horizontally compressed by a half? Where did that come from? All right, seemed like we needed some white pork time. So just for emphasis, the amplitude is still one because we haven't had a vertical dilation, which we know because there's no number in front of that. So that's where our vertical dilation would be. But now we have this two inside with theta. Remember inside is opposite. Now we mentioned that we have horizontally compressed the graph by a half and then we were wondering where a half would come from. Well, this is two. One half is the reciprocal of two. Let's see. So the normal period is two pi. We're looking at this as a half, horizontally compressed by a half. So if our normal period is two pi, two pi times a half is pi. That is the period. Oh my gosh. So this might, we might have guessed right. Hmm. Okay, how many cycles then from zero to two pi? Two. Notice that that matches. All right, Miss Ryan, I think we've got some good understanding going. Let's see what else we can do. Wilson, do you have another problem for us? All right, Wilson, so we're gonna try y equals sine of one half theta now. Hmm, before we figured out what the two next to the theta kind of did, so what do you think a good guess would be for the half? Pause, see if you can write down. We probably think it's a horizontal something blank by a factor of blank. See if you can fill in the blanks. All right, did you guess horizontal stretch by a factor of two? If you did, you're totally right. Just like last time, it's the reciprocal, you know, inside opposite. So this, even though it's one half, we're say, taking the reciprocal and saying two and stretch. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out the period. All right, so if we had a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, well, factor means multiply. Our typical period's two pi, so we'd multiply our regular period by two, because we're stretching it by a factor of two. So that would mean our period should be four pi. Okay, so how many cycles would occur between zero and two pi then? Okay, well, if our period's four pi, then that means one cycle of sine happens between zero and four pi. So zero, pi, zero, low, zero, there's one cycle, but I wanna know how many fit between zero and two pi. And two pi is half of four pi, so I'm only seeing this part here. How many cycles is that? Looks like about half. So if our normal period is two pi and we divide it by our new period, four pi, we're gonna get, the pi's divide out, two divided by four, 
is one half. So we're getting half a cycle. Hmm. So half a cycle from zero to two pi. Good job, Wilson. Always abandoning me. Okay, Wilson, let's look at this graph then. The new period is four pi. So we still start at sine of zero is zero, but now this is one pi. We go high, one pi. Two pi, back to zero. Three pi, go low. Four pi, oh no! <laughs> Four pi, we're back to zero. So Three here pi. we go, one sine wave from zero to four pi. A horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Okay, so let's review what we've learned so far about sine. So let's suppose y equals a sine of b theta. Really, horseshoes right now? Okay, a stands for the amplitude. We already knew that. We know the amplitude always has to be positive because it's half the distance from the height. Then we have sine of b. We're gonna go ahead and call that inside number b theta, where a can't be zero and then theta always needs to be in radians because we've been graphing in radians. Okay, so b turns out to be the number of cycles between zero and two pi. The third fact that comes from this equation is that the absolute value of two pi over b is the period. Now let's think about that. Two pi is the normal period for a sine function, and then we're dividing it by the number of cycles that would occur between zero and two pi. So that creates the period for the transformed function. I know, Wilson, nice shot, huh? And did you take a shower or something? Cause you're looking better. Fine. Yes, I'll go back and do some sign graphs. That's fine. Yeah, I'm excited. I love sign graphs. Let's do it. You probably think you're funny, buddy. Okay. A negative, a three, and a pi. Great. Okay. It's fine. We got this. Don't we, guys? We know our transformations. Here we go. Reflected about the horizontal, which is the theta axis, vertically, yep, stretched by a factor of three. And horizontally, well, we just learned, we have to take the reciprocal, right? So it's one over pi, one over 3.14159, so just about one third. So it is horizontally compressed. Whoops, not enough room. Make sure you get compressed in there by a factor of one over pi. Okay, next, because of that vertical stretch, that changes the amplitude to three. The period, let's think about it, normal period is two pi. We have horizontally compressed it by a factor multiply of one over pi. So we have a period of two. And of course, this is actually just easy because B is the number of cycles between zero and two pi and B is that value there, which is pi. Now we're gonna have to graph it. So think on that for a moment. The period is two. Hmm. Okay, so with that, let's see what we can do. Need a little room. Here we go. So here's my vertical y-axis, my horizontal theta axis. And of course, because I get to choose, if the period is two, I know I'm going out here to two. Half of two is one, half of that is one half. And over here, one and a half. So we could say three halves or one and a half. Remember, we're in radians, so this is two radiuses long, right? Okay, we already have the horizontal compression by a factor of one over pi, and we've already figured out that the period is two. So now I just need to graph the sine graph. It has been vertically stretched by a factor of three, so one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I go with my five pattern points. So sine starts at zero, then we go high. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Forgot the first thing, it's negative, so it's been reflected, so not high. We're gonna go low to negative three, back to zero high. It's the only time we go low before high is when it's reflected. And then we can go ahead and sketch. And keep in mind, this goes on forever. So let's do our best to put arrows, even though it's been hard for us in these videos, on graphs. Okay, so this shows one period of the graph. Of the graphs presented, which one does it match to? 